Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Baker with Zul 11 Ministries. We talked with Yoram Ettinger, a native Israeli and former ambassador, and he gives us a very sober analysis about the dangers of a nuclear Iran. Well, we're privileged to have Yoram Ettinger here, retired Israeli ambassador, expert on U.S.-Israel relations and Middle East affairs. He is speaking at the 2013 Pre-Trib Conference here in Dallas, Texas. Yoram, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to ask you right away, Iran, uh, this troubling deal that uh, our misguided uh, administration has made, uh, what's Israel's take on that, you being an Israeli and living in Israel? Well, in my assessment, uh, this agreement reflects determination by the White House to learn from history by repeating rather than avoiding uh, mistakes, mistakes which were committed uh, in the negotiation with uh, North Korea. The fact is that for 50 years the current methodology was used also with North Korea and the output is very obvious. Another anti-American rogue regime with nuclear power in North uh, Korea. For 50 years they tried negotiation and diplomacy and economic sanctions and carrots and sticks and they were testing to no avail. For the last 30 years the same methodology has been employed with Iran and here we are at the end of the last lap of the Iranian nuclear marathon and once again we hear that there is a chance for uh, diplomacy as if we haven't had a 50-year and a 30-year mm -hmm. track record. The other concerning issue is that this agreement could very well catapult uh, Iran from a medium-sized tactical controllable threat to a super-sized uncontrollable uh, strategic threat with apocalyptic uh, vision which does not render itself to mutual assured destruction. The difference between a nuclear Iran and a nuclear Soviet Union is that the Soviet Union were constrained by their own concern for mutual assured destruction. The apocalyptic nature of the Iranian regime does not lend itself to be concerned about mutual assured destruction and we can get a glimpse of what is this regime all about when we go back to their war against Iraq where they sent 500,000 youngsters to clear minefields mm. in order to facilitate the war against Iraq. There are those who claim that Iran is just like North Korea, no big danger to the global safety. The difference is North Korea does not harbor any imperialistic megalomaniac aspirations to control Asia, to control the world. Iran does. Iran wants to dominate the Gulf. Iran wants to dominate the Sunni Muslim world. Iran wants to dominate consequently the rest of the world. This has been their worldview and therefore a nuclear Iran would bode more insanity to an already increasingly insane world. Yeah, and Iran has always said uh, before and now after this, this deal, which I think is, is no better than the deal that um, Naval Chamberlain made with Hitler, and we saw where that went, uh, Iran has stated from the outset and continues to state that one of their first objectives is to destroy Israel. Well, the, the issue is not Israel, and I think Americans should wake up to reality. Reality is that Iran develops the capability in order to advance their mega historical goal, domination of the Gulf and the Sunni Muslim world. In order to attain that goal, they have to remove what they perceive to be the mega obstacle, which has nothing to do with Israel. It's the U.S. military power projection in the Gulf, in the Indian Ocean, Middle East at large. And in order to remove that mega obstacle, they develop the mega capability which is nuclear. It has nothing to do with Israel, not the Arab-Israeli conflict, not the Palestinian issue. The, the problem is that the U.S. negotiates with Iran as if Iran is a rogue regime which considers 
peaceful coexistence with such rogue regimes, it pays off to negotiate. But Iran is a different type of rogue regime. While they negotiate with uh, John Kerry and Obama, they support the killing of Americans in Afghanistan. They support subversion in the pro-American Arab oil producing regimes in the Persian Gulf. They collaborate with Venezuela to stir up anti-American feeling sentiments in Latin, uh, in Latin America. They are the number one patron of anti-American Islamic terrorism, including scores of sleeper cells in your own uh, continent. And at the same time, we hear that they are partners to peaceful negotiation. Mm. Peaceful negotiation and the Ayatollah's regime in Tehran are a classic case of oxymoron. Yes. And there's certainly a clear and present danger now. Uh, you had uh, referenced uh, North Korea, and, and, and Obama, I think, is making the same mistake President Clinton made when he thought he could no negotiate with North Korea and get them to uh, cut back and altogether stop their nuclear program. And, of course, they were stringing him along. And well, in fact, the, the leader or the chief negotiator with North Korea is exactly the same oh, I didn't person know that. who could today negotiates with Iran, mm. Miss Wendy Sherman. Miss Wendy mm. Sherman was Mr. Clinton's chief negotiator. She failed miserably with North she Korea. Did, yes. She's given now another chance. And guess what? She's following exactly the same path of once again concessions, once again appeasement, once again diplomacy and testing intentions, which did not work with North Korea, has not worked with Iran, and there is no reason why one should think logically it will work again with uh, Iran. Well, in light of this, of course, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, has, has boldly and courageously <coughs> stood up and, and denounced this. Um, what will Israel do in light of, uh, let's say, Iran continues down the road of, of nuclear acquisition? What do you see the state of Israel doing well, eventually? It seems to me that, again, after 30 years of failed economic sanctions and diplomacy, uh, there is, this is the time to reach a common sense conclusion. And the common sense conclusion is that those who are intimidated by threat of war are bringing war, in fact, that much closer to the free world. And therefore, there's only one working uh, option, and this is preemption, a military mm -hmm. preemption. And I emphasize with no boots on the ground. There's no need uh, to employ boots on the ground if one wants to obliterate the nuclear infrastructure in uh, Iran. It would be much easier for the U.S., but it would be also possible for Israel. For the U.S., you have a huge military presence in Bahrain, in Saudi Arabia, in uh, the Persian Gulf, in the Indian Ocean. It would be a medium-sized military exercise with bunker uh, busters, sophisticated missile warheads uh, launched at those missile uh, bases. For Israel, it would be uh, significantly more complex, but uh, this has been the story of Jewish history, very complex uh, uh, history, very challenging uh, times, and so far we have withstood those challenges with much success, or else we wouldn't be here. Right, right. Um, the Jewish nation uh, was established because everywhere the Jewish people went, they were uh, persecuted, hounded, and threatened, and then with the Shoah, finally uh, they realized we've got to go back to our home, where we belong. Well, not, not only where we belong, but where we uh, serve uh, the interests of the free world in the most effective right. way. It's time for people in the U.S. to realize that there is only one, only one effective ally uh, for the U.S., not only in the Middle East, but anywhere in the world. Namely, Israel is the only ally of the USA with both capabilities as well as willpower. You have many allies with capabilities in Europe, but they have lost God, they have lost faith, mm. they have lost confidence, and they don't have the willpower. Israel is the only one. And at a time when the Arab tsunami 
is sweeping more and more pro-American elements in the Arab world at a time when the Arab tsunami highlights the unpredictability, the unreliability, the treacherous, the violent, intolerant nature of the Arab Islamic Middle East, this is the time when Israel is more and more highlighted as the only stable and reliable and capable commercially and militarily, the only democratic and most importantly, the only unconditional ally of the U.S. And while the U.S. is in retreat from Iraq and Afghanistan and cuts dramatically the defense budget, while the threats to the U.S. are mounting and Russia and China penetrate deeper and deeper into the Middle East and beyond, the only element in the entire world that can bridge the gap between the shortening American strategic hand on one hand and the increasing threats and the needs is Israel. And therefore, the alliance between U.S. and Israel is much more appropriate and natural at this time of the Arab tsunami and the Iranian threat. The tragedy is that this agreement signed with nuclear, with the nuclear Iran, this agreement is in line with American policy vis-a-vis -vis Syria and vis-a-vis -vis Egypt, etc., proves once again that the American administration is intent to focus on the tumbleweeds in the Middle East while it is being smothered by an Egyptian sandstorm, Syrian sandstorm, Iranian sandstorm, Islamist sandstorm, and here they are dealing with the Palestinian tumbleweed which is along the road here on, uh, or there in the Middle East. Yeah, it's really sad at a time when the U.S. Well, and the Obama administration needs to strengthen their ties with Israel, they seem to be through this uh, deal with Iran and the things you just mentioned, they seem to be greatly weakening those ties and it's troubling for us here in America who support Israel for political as well as uh, theological reasons. It's frustrating for us. But Well, uh, but one should pay attention that luckily the American political system does not allow for a monarch, for right. does not allow right. for a single dominant branch of government. And today we experience unprecedented U.S.-Israel strategic cooperation, economic cooperation, not because of the White House, sometimes even in spite of the White mm. House, but primarily because this is the will of the American people. This is the will of their representatives on Capitol Hill, the House and the, and the Senate. And most importantly, this is an outcome of the unprecedented mutual threats facing both the U.S. and Israel, built on top of very healthy, unique foundations of shared Judeo-Christian values. We don't have any other set of relationships as we do have with the U.S., where it is bottom-up type of relations, unlike all others which are up to the bottom. Mm, very, very well uh, spoken. Excellent analysis, Joram. We thank you for coming. Uh, thank before you. Before you leave, can you tell our audience how they may get in touch with your organization? Sure, sure. I, uh, I had a foundation called Second Thought uh, aimed at generating out-of-the-box thinking, second thought about conventional so-called wisdom, about or challenging political uh, correctness, and you can find out uh, data about that organization, our weekly output by visiting uh, www.theettingerreport, Ettinger with double uh, t.com, www.theettingerreport.com. Okay, well, check it out, folks. Uh, thank you so much for Thank joining you. us today, Yoram. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. All right.